Hello my fellow pilots and welcome again to another episode of Star Citizen FM. Episode 59. Star Citizen FM is your fan community source for anything related to Star Citizen, the community, or anything else in the verse that might catch your fancy. Star Citizen FM is hosted by yours truly, Dr. Hawk, so join me as we go over some of this week's highlights. The first big highlight that seems to be on everyone's mind as of recently is the new $41 million stretch goal. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that this is the $41 million stretch goal. At $42 million, as we all know, as Star Citizen has proved thus far, I'm pretty sure that CIG will be hosting something truly epic and worthy of Star Citizen's name. What they will be doing, not yet to be determined, but I do know that we will undoubtedly unlock more stretch goals as well as have a few little nifty videos probably shown in the meantime what we do have is the procedural generation research and development team this stretch goal will allocate funding for cloud imperium to develop procedural generation technology for future iterations of star citizen advanced procedural generation will be necessary for creating entire planets worth of exploration and development content a special strike team of procedural generation oriented developers will be assembled to make this technology a reality. And the next stretch goal that we have ahead of us is courtesy of the community voting for the Omni Roll Combat Armor, or Orc Armor. This will be available at 43 million and it can be considered the standard marine armor. Orc armor is prohibitively more expensive than standard issue infantry body armor used by army ground forces, but the marines boast far fewer numbers and tend to make more compelling arguments to get what they ask for. Clark Defense Systems Orc armor is created of composite mesh of fibers reinforced with a blade of plates, offering a modest protection against both energy and kinetic weapons. While it doesn't offer the same protection of the marines' proprietary nail armor or their spec ops variants, Orc Mark 9 armor is a baseline solution for any number of situations that average marines will encounter on any given day. Besides, in the words of Lieutenant Colonel Armin Trask, you want to know the best armor? Not getting shot. Pretty sure that'll be the major role in Star Citizen, but for those of you that want a little bit of extra protection when shipboarding, it's probably better to have some armor rather than none as if I can quote another famous man who may be known in Battletech universe, it doesn't matter what kind of light mech you're running, eventually you will get hit. So, to those of you who know who I'm talking about, props to you. The next stretch goals that you can vote for can be found in the com link in the letter from the chairman, $41 million issue. The options available right now are A, a ship's new gun, B, an additional hangar room, C. Updated scanner software D. A new role-specific outfit E. A dashboard decoration F. Engine tuning kit G. A ship skin H. A space plant I, I have no idea and I. A mystery object The three leading the charge right now are B. An additional hangar room with 25% of the pole F an engine tuning kit with 18% and mystery object as well at 18%. My recommendations are for the engine tuning kit. As we all know, we need to go fast. We don't need an additional hangar room, we just need to go fast. And if that doesn't work, I'll just paint my spaceship red. Finally, the letter from the chairman article does go over another thing that happened last week that some of you are still talking about, and in fact a lot of people are still talking about, the Oculus Rift slash Facebook buyout. Now, Chris Roberts goes on to explain his side of the story and how he views the Oculus Rift acquisition, and there's some actually very valid points that I would highly encourage you guys to read. I'm not going to go over them as they are his views and I have my own. However, my views don't really differ that much from his. People can say what they want about Facebook acquiring Oculus Rift, but in the end, some of the things that Chris said apply to many things in real life. Tech costs money. Things cost money. You can walk the walk all you want in life, but in the end, bullshit walks and money talks. That's the unfortunate truth. And if Facebook can actually help fund Oculus in the proper direction, kind of similar to how Bungie was acquired by Activision. I remembered a lot of Bungie fanboys crying out against that, and now they're making Destiny, which looks to be a great game. 
then they should be fine. And in regards to Star Citizen, I'm pretty sure we will be left with a product that will be both worthy of what Facebook wishes it to be and what we as gamers wish it to be for Star Citizen. And I'm going to leave that at that. Other topics of note that may be worthy of your interest this week are the next great starship. As always, you can check out the competing teams that are working hard away at their designs for the next great starship. At the same time, this video also does have some sneak peeks regarding the dogfighting module that will be released soon. It also does show some of the interesting setups that you will be able to use in Star Citizen, and those are not limited to Oculus Rift, Hota Setup, Mouse and Keyboard, Joystick, Xbox Controller Pad, Mind Melt Matrix Tech, whatever you choose to play Star Citizen with. There isn't a whole lot of gameplay footage if that's what you're looking for, for so sorry to you know burst your bubble there. But you can check out the next great starship. It will be returning on April 18th, so for those of you who have been watching it fervently, be sure to tune in on April 18th and wish the teams the best of luck. They'll probably need it once they get to the more critical judging stages and narrowing down that the ship that they you know, on the ship that they want. Yeah, this flu is making me slur and stutter my words. Regardless, the next article we have to go over is the Shroud of the Avatar Crossbow. Now for those of you that are not aware, there's a crossbow you can obtain in Star Citizen for backing a co-developer company of Chris Roberts uh, CIG. I can't seem to say that correctly. Co-developer. I'll just stick with that. There is a crossbow you can obtain by backing the Shroud of the Avatar game, and by doing so I believe you have to pledge more than $45, you will obtain a crossbow in Star Citizen. Now, what good is a crossbow in Star Citizen, you say? Well, check out these pictures. It's given a very nice, futuristic, modern look. It's a nice twist on the crossbow that, we're expect that we are used to seeing. And for those of you that you know, may have been swayed or are not on the, you know, sure if you want a crossbow yet, this might be a good idea to you know, go pledge for the game just to get a sexy looking crossbow like that and help out a fellow indie developer. At the same time, I still don't feel too comfortable using a crossbow in a sci-fi game. I like crossbows, but I would rather be using something that has a lot of weight behind it, like a bullet or a rocket or maybe a bullet rocket. Even then, the other thing you can obtain is a Van Duel bow staff, I believe. Again, looking at this thing, I we're not supposed to be going backwards here. At the same time, art direction is very nice, very pretty, and if you'd like to pick these up, all you have to do is go pledge for Shroud of the Avatar, $45. And finally, the last article that's been making every citizen's underpants wet. The Idris revamp. Now, everyone has seen the Idris before. Very nice Corvette. You know, perfect for assaulting people with billions of missiles and glorious weaponry, so on and so forth. But the issue was is that it was too small. It needed to carry multiple Hornets, both in Squadron 42 and the Persistent Universe. And it just wasn't fitting the bill. So fast forward to now, and Foundry 42 has actually taken the Idris and reworked it. In the end, the ship is a full hundred meters longer and is a much more imposing threat than the patrol corvette that was originally envisioned. Um, de personally wise, the design choice, I am loving it. It has a lot more solid look. The Idris before looks something like a uh, kind of just a spin-off of the constellation if you will i know it's still different but it still didn't seem unique enough in its own aspect the new revamp gives it a lot more meat on the bone so to speak we don't really know what looks inside yet all we have is the concept art that's being shown so when i do have more stuff to show you guys i will definitely show you as to how many hornets it'll fit we don't know what kind of new weapon loadouts will it have we don't know all we have is this beautiful, glorious concept art to go over, so I'll leave this with you guys. How, oh, well, the one thing I did forget to go over, actually, was the uh, <laughs> the search and rescue ship, now included with every address. It's one of the reasons we needed to reclassify, apparently. 
Now, what exactly the search and rescue ship will be used for? Um, my wagering would be for recovering pilots who have been VTOL from their ships. In other words, blown up. If your pilot hasn't been killed and you need to be picked up, these most likely will be the ships that you find saving you, or the nanny ships, so to speak. Or they could just be, you know, any other kind of search and rescue ship that uh, you find saving pilots in the universe. The only thing that makes me think it's looking for pilots is if you look at the concept art on the lower, uh, sorry, lower right, on the right hand side of the image, that looks very v vaguely close to a piece that you'd find off an Aurora. Just the shape of the uh, airlock in the pod, it, like maybe that's where the pilot goes to if he has to bail out. And then again, I'm just spitballing here. So we won't know until they, you know, elaborate on it further. But if you'd like to check out the Idris revamp, all you gotta do is find that in the com link, the Idris revamp, and give it a give it a look because it's certainly worth one. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my show. Uh, Ten minutes, maybe a little too short for some of you, maybe a little too long for others. Regardless, I'm still playing with Star Citizen FM. I'm trying to find that sweet spot that people like. At the moment, I have a few plans coming up that make me. Meh, 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 meh. As you also have noticed, I'm still sick and dealing with this, and it is driving me up the flipping wall. So hopefully next time you'll hear a less sick hawk. And as mentioned, the show, I'm going to work on a few other things, have some interviews coming up, as well as just try to make things better. With the dogfighting module coming out, I will have a lot of video content to go over, and I plan to start going over the PvP and PvE section of Star Citizen on Star Citizen FM. Or at least what I think would be optimum. Uh, with that being said, for those of you that have any possible ideas or suggestions, you can always do so in the comments section below or in the forums. I also accept PayPal donations as of request now. Some of you have donated quite a bit and it's greatly appreciated. Every little bit goes towards you know, ensuring that Star Citizen FM continues forward. With that being said, I also had to make a little announcement here. It has uh, come to my attention as of recently doing to life events, and this is all for the good, that Dr. Hawk will be going back to university to get his doctorate, his medical degree. This is something I wanted to do previously, and now the means actually might happen. Now, keep in mind, I have to still get my BSE and all that fun stuff. So what does this mean for Star Citizen? Well, I don't... Uh, sorry, Star Citizen FM? I don't know yet. It might impact show times. It might cause me to broadcast on different days. As you guys have noticing, I'm trying to broadcast at least in the middle of the week now to tie in with Wingman's Hangar, as opposed to just Sundays, which I used to do. So, going to university? Don't know what that'll do. In the meantime, we'll figure it out. And I can promise you guys, Dr. Hawk will always be here to give you guys the latest info in t t tidbit fashion on Star Citizen. In the meantime, this is Dr. Hawk with Star Citizen FM signing off. Thank you very much, all of you, for bearing with me and sticking in there. I'll see you guys next time in the next episode of Star Citizen FM. You guys all take care and fly safe. This is Dr. Hawk signing off.